Hello, my name is Lauren Cherney, and I'm an attorney with Chicago Volunteer Legal Services. I work in the Early Resolution Program, primarily assisting landlords navigate the eviction process in Cook County. Today, in this presentation, we'll go over evictions in Cook County and some alternative routes to resolve your case with your tenant outside of the court process. First, we'll go over the eviction process and go over the five main stages in this process. The first step is to give the tenant your termination notice. This notifies the tenant that there's some issue that you would like to have resolved. After that notice is given, then you can file your case with the court, proceed with a number of court hearings, and then get a court order. The final step is going to the sheriff's office to have them enforce the eviction order. The first stage in the eviction process, again, is giving the tenant a termination notice. There are three main categories of termination notices. The first one is the five-day notice, which should be given in most non-payment cases. The second type is a 10-day notice if there's a different type of lease violation. For example, if your tenant has a pet or is smoking in the unit when that's prohibited from the lease. The final type of notice is for a non-renewal case, otherwise known as a no-cause eviction, and we'll discuss this a little bit more on the next slide. There are a number of standard forms for notices available through the Illinois Supreme Court, and we recommend you use these forms as they help ensure that you provide all of the necessary information for giving notice, including things like the address, the tenant's name, and the timeline that's required. How you deliver the notice to the tenant is also important. Typically, the notice should be delivered either in person to the tenant or to someone who's above the age of 13 who lives in the unit, or by sending it via certified registered mail with a return receipt. For that third type of notice, that's known as a no-cause eviction notice. This might be done when there's no particular issue you have with the tenant, but you would still like them to move out of the property. This is often done in cases where you as the landlord may want to sell the unit, or you may want to move into the unit yourself. Often, in these types of cases, we see a 30-day notice being given, but often this is not enough notice. Depending on where you live and how long the tenant has lived in the unit, you may need 60 or 120 days of notice. For the specific guidelines regarding your property, we recommend you look to the Cook County Residential Landlord Tenant Ordinance or the Chicago Fair Notice Ordinance for guidance regarding your case. Then, after the period noted in the notice has elapsed and the issue has not been resolved, you may want to file your case in court. There are several documents that must be included in every eviction case. First, you'll want to include a copy of that notice. So it's important that you keep a copy after you're giving it to the tenant so that you can file it with your case. You'll also want to include an affidavit of service, which describes how and when you delivered the notice to your tenant. Sometimes this is included on the notice itself. You'll also want to complete and file a complaint, which tells the court the issue in the case and what you're asking the court to do. You'll also want to complete a summons, which is done in the service portion, which we'll discuss on the next slide. You'll also want to include a lease, and if you don't have a written lease with your tenant, you can include an affidavit that speaks to missing documents, like a lease. There are certain fees for filing a case in Cook County. If you're unable to afford those costs, you can file something known as a fee waiver that asks the court to waive certain fees involved with an eviction case. Most filing in Cook County is now done online through a website known as Odyssey, and this process is known as e-filing. If you're unable to file documents online, you can file something known as an exemption to ask the court to allow you to file in person at the courthouse. Again, there are standard forms available through the Illinois Supreme Court, and we recommend you use those documents again as they'll help ensure that you include all of the necessary information. Our organization's website for Chicago Volunteer Legal Services also includes a checklist and links to forms that are relevant for particular cases. The next step is completing service. Service is when someone, typically the sheriff, goes to the tenant and provides them with certain documentation that shows them that an eviction case has been filed against them and when the next court date will occur. Again, this is typically first attempted by the sheriff, so you'll need to file that paperwork with the sheriff's office directly. If the sheriff is unable to serve the tenant for whatever reasons, there are additional options for completing service. Typically, an eviction case will not proceed towards a judgment until service has been completed. Then, after you file your court case, you'll get an initial court date. Usually, the initial court date occurs at least 30 days after the paperwork has been filed, so the eviction process does take a fair amount of time. The hearings that are occurring in Cook County are occurring over Zoom right now, so you may be able to attend your court hearing remotely. After a number of court hearings, you may be able to get a judgment. This might be done through an agreement with your tenant, or you may need to go through the trial process, 
or you may be able to get a default judgment. A default judgment usually occurs if the tenant has been served but fails to appear in court after a couple of dates. Something that also might arise during the court process is known as the right to cure. This is a one-time right by a tenant in Cook County to pay all of the rent owed and some additional fees like court costs and have the case dismissed against them. Then, after you get a court order, if the tenant does not leave on their own, you may need to file enforcement documents with the sheriff to have them go out to enforce the eviction. As the landlord, you're not able to enforce the eviction on your own, and the sheriff is the only party legally able to actually go out to the property to enforce an eviction. To file these documents with the sheriff's office, you may be able to do so online or in person. There are a number of common myths that we see with eviction cases in Cook County. The first myth that we often hear about is that evictions don't proceed during the winter months, and that's not true. Eviction court is proceeding typically as normal throughout the winter months, except for in some exceptional circumstances. So you may be able to file a case and proceed through court all throughout the winter. The sheriff's office is also enforcing evictions throughout the winter months, except if there are particularly harsh weather conditions like particular cold or snowstorms. However, generally evictions are proceeding during the winter months. Another common myth we see is that as a landlord, you can just change the locks to your unit if there's some sort of issue like non-payment by your tenant. This is not the case. This can be known as a lockout and can have serious consequences as a landlord. So we recommend going through one of the routes noted in this presentation, like eviction court or one of the alternatives that we'll discuss in a moment, instead of locking your tenant out of the unit. The final myth that we commonly see in Cook County is that you will get a judgment on your first court date. And this is also not the case. Typically, there are a number of court dates before a judgment is given, and the eviction process usually does take several months to be completed. The eviction process may take a long time, but there are some alternatives to resolving your issue. The first one is known as rental assistance. There are a number of rental assistance programs available, and these programs may cover all of the rent owed in your particular case, as well as covering some potential future rent. Again, there are a number of programs available, but which programs apply to you may depend on where the property is located and the timing of the application. Different programs may arise before and after an eviction case has been filed with the court. Most of these applications do include an agreement by the landlord to not pursue an eviction case in court for a certain period of time, so it's important to read the application thoroughly before submitting so that you understand the terms that you're agreeing to. There is a great resource out there, chicookillrenthelp.org, which is a website that can help show the potential opportunities available to you to apply for rental assistance. The second alternative to eviction court is known as mediation. Mediation is a Zoom call between you and your tenant and a third party mediator from the organization called the Center for Conflict Resolution. The goal of this Zoom call is to come to a written agreement with your tenant either about moving out or coming up with some sort of payment plan. This is a free service that can be available either before a case is filed or at any point until a judgment is given. There are a number of agreed orders available through the Illinois Supreme Court that can provide a template for these agreements. Again, these agreements usually focus on a move out date or coming to some sort of payment agreement between you and the tenant to allow them to stay in the unit. Rental assistance can also be part of mediation and these alternatives may be able to work together. Mediation can be a great route for both parties to have their concerns heard and can help get an agreement in writing sooner than you might be able to through the court process. It can also help landlords come current on their own bills more quickly than they might be able to through court. If you have questions about your particular case, I recommend you reach out to the Cook County Legal Aid for Housing and Debt Hotline, which can be reached at 855-956-5763. You can also go to their website and they may be able to match you with a specific attorney that can help with your specific issues.